Welcome to my little video on how you can use atoms for annotating objects in images. First of all, you would have to do download atoms. So you can download the latest snapshot of atoms. And for that purpose, I recommend you downloading the annotator snapshot. Um, if you're on Linux, you can either download the Debian or RPM one, but I just say zip file that works cross-platform and also contains all the workflows that we require. So I've already done that. Um, download the directory, unzipped it, and in our bin directory we can find either the start GUI batch file or shell script with which we can start atoms. Furthermore, we need some data. I'm just gonna use some example data from our user-friendly deep learning project and in this case it's gonna be a Oxford University data set for image um, segmentation um, just the Canva 12 data set and we're ignoring the existing annotations for this data sets we just need the raw data so in this case we're downloading the grayscale data set download here takes a wee while to do All right, that's finished. We're extracting that in the directory. So each image, if you look at that, has annotations. It's probably hard to see in grayscale um, annotations, but we will basically just get rid of those. So we don't need any PNG files. We just need the JPEG files. Dum, 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 dum. Let's see where they start. Right. I'm going to delete all that. Okay, so now we only have the JPEGs we want to do. Okay, so I'm gonna start up Adams then. And in this case, I'm opening the flow editor and I will execute the annotate objects flow for annotating objects. Clicking on the blue triangle here or going through the run menu and clicking on run um, we can start the flow. So now we can um, go to the directory with the data that we want to annotate. So you can choose between bounding box and object shape in this video I'm just going to show you how to use bounding boxes and for this example I just want to um, annotate basically cars. You can have multiple ones so for instance you could also have cyclists in there. So the whole um, list here, if you wait over there you get a little tooltip, it's a blank separated list of object labels. So for the time being we can say yep car and cyclist and you can always extend that list later on down the track if you want to annotate more objects for the time being we're good with that hit ok and then it brings up the list of images that are in that directory i'm just going to go for a particular um, subset and just select some of them Oh yeah, great. So we already have a cyclist here, as you can see. So if you want to, you can make that larger. Zoom in with the zoom controls up here, or have a fixed zoom of a certain size. Um, it's really up to you, and depending on the data set that you're working on. So on the left hand side, you can see you have your two categories, car and cyclist, and as buttons, and an unset button. The unset button is basically for removing a label if you accidentally label something. It's only removing a label, but not the actual bounding box that you've drawn. So in this case, I want to annotate the cyclist. So I'll click on the cyclist button, and then I click in the top left corner, Hold my with the left uh, mouse button, 
hold the button and then basically draw the box around the object and then let go and then you can see oh uh, yeah cyclist and over here um, we have then a car which we can then do the same way and we just annotate other cars here in the background as well don't worry about the quality of the annotations this is really just an example on how to do that once you're happy with the annotations you can hit OK um, if you wanted to undo something you can use the undo redo buttons up here um, or if you needed to remove um, annotations you can double right sort of like double click while holding down the control key and that basically then gives you a dialogue with all the objects in case there's multiple ones um, that fall in there and then you can remove that the selected ones Oops. so I'm going to go back on cyclist and re-annotate that one again another one is um, holding down the Oops. holding down the control key and then drawing a big bounding box around uh, and then let go that basically removes all the uh, annotations within that box but we don't want that so we are doing that again so if you're happy with that um, you can hit basically okay so don't worry you can always go back and re-annotate this is not a one-off thing um, you can always then go through and refine for instance if you add another category uh, building or sky or tree or something like that um, you could always go back and re annotate things so I'm just gonna I'm fine with that so I'm gonna be okay um, yeah here's another cyclist so I'm gonna annotate that one again um, car, car. it's a very similar frame it's from a video basically from a dash cam um, so we'll probably want to skip some of them I'm just doing that okay um, so cancel basically moves on to the next one without doing anything this seems um, different enough so we can annotate these so I'm going to annotate some cars again They're a bit larger here now and better to see and also use our friend the cyclist again okay let's do some cars different angle Let's let, uh, so in this case for instance we could have pedestrians so for instance um, if I go in the flow editor and stop the workflow and rerun it again I could then for instance add a new category the pedestrian um, I once again look for my subset and then just I want to grab Okay, you can see here's basically my annotations. Um, let me just cancel those because I don't want to change them, just to quickly go through. Oh yeah, so here I finally have some pedestrians, so I can annotate those as well. Pedestrian, 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 and then car. Let's annotate the cars. another car um, do one in the back this one yep, and we're doing the pedestrians again okay cars car, 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 car. and so on plenty to annotate So once you basically have annotated everything um, you can then convert this particular data set that you've created so going into the grayscale um, oops, set. so here's now 16e5 ones I just have to find the ones yeah so you can see there's basically now little files and, um, next to the JPEGs itself so this these are atoms basically 
annotations. Um, and they're basically just um, properties files, Java property files with the various objects that um, were annotated. And you can then see, for instance, in here, oh yeah, this object is a car and um, it has the width, um, height, x, and y. And that's basically what's being displayed there. And once you've um, annotated enough of those, you can then use those Adam's annotations and convert them into another data set because at the end of the day you want to use most likely a deep learning framework that can actually use them and in order to do that we have a tool called Y Notations and this tool allows you to convert for instance the annotations that you've done with Adams into other formats like MS Coco, or TensorFlow records something like that so it's very easy to use. It's just a Python library which comes with command line tools. So the main thing, um, so once so it's a lot of installation is up here if you want to see it. Um, you can either install sort of like that in a virtual environment um, and then link to that. It has various um, formats so here's our Adams one and Coco would be the one that we're converting for instance into um, so if you're looking um, at the Adams to MS Coco conversion so assuming that we've installed Y notations um, then we use Y notations as the main command line tool the subcommand convert and we want basically to convert from um, Adams, provide the um, directory, which is whatever it is, it's the input directory called input. Um, I could also have other things if they accidentally have very small annotations in there, for instance, if they got generated through a um, automatic process, uh, I could say get rid of them or to large ones. So you can do sort of like not only converting from one data set into another, you can also then apply what they're called in-stream processes to it uh, where you can further um, do things like discarding certain labels and things like that and then as output we want to have uh, Coco output where in the output directory we want to store the annotations in the MS Coco JSON format on that file um, if you want to could provide for instance license information or in this case this would basically just output the JSON and not the images um, with that flag. Um, if in our case uh, we would want to have the images of course. Other things that you can do, um, you can also split things. So most of the outputs allowing you to um, specify um, split names and split ratios. So that allows you to, in this case, a training and validation set with an 80-20 split but you could also do train test validation so it's really up to you how many um, splits you want to generate and it's just that the split ratios the integers have to correspond basically um, to the names that you're giving it and it basically generates then subdirectories with the annotations of that subset then once you've done that you can then train your uh, deep learning algorithm and um, if you um, increase your annotations over time then you can just go back and reconvert things again and retrain again so very easy altogether and that's it thank you very much